Tandy Newton uh, apologizing and bawling her eyes out for being a light-skinned woman who has taken blacker women, sorry, darker-skinned black women roles. Thoughts on that? I know. I know. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I'm so, uh, so tired. Danny's awesome. She's a great actress. Wonderful. I didn't even know she took dark-skinned women's roles. I didn't know we were supposed to be mad at her. Well, because she says light skin, lighter skinned women of brown and black races tend to get the roles over darker skinned women. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like she was cast to play a woman who actually was darker skinned because well, like I think she tried she played Nina Simone and there was pushback against that. Well, that was no, that was the other light skinned chick. <laughs> that was Zoe Saldana. Oh, you're right. I'm confusing my light skinned chicks. <laughs> My bad. You are correct. Sorry about that. So no, I don't know exactly if she's apologizing for a specific role, but it sounds like she was apologizing for it happening in general. Thoughts on that? I mean, skinnier women get get cast for more roles than than fat women. Taller women get cast for more roles than short women. Correct. If you happen to be correct. beautiful in general, you're much more likely to get a, a, a look for acting and and in, you know get an agent and get auditions and all of these things. If you're if you're fat and ugly, you better be funny. Right. And nice. And nice. And that one producer who who's got a who's got a a, a fetish for for big women, you you better do whatever whatever that evil person says when they when they ask you to come to their fucked up party or some shit. Right. I mean, where but where does the line stop? So straight actors can't play gay roles. Um, we've been white casting black roles for years. I mean, every time they make a movie about the Old Testament, I mean, I don't see these movies filled with Middle Eastern people, right? I think one of them starred like Daniel Craig. Right. So I, I mean, you know, if Noah looks like Brad Pitt, where does the line stop? I mean, blonde are- haired, blue eyed people running around in the Middle East, blonde hair, blue eyed and pale as fuck running around really in the Middle East. Really? Right. They all would have gotten skin cancer in a day. Right. I mean, at least pull out a bottle of suntan lotion at some point during this episode but i mean where does the line stop so if if you are not a handicapped person you can't play the role of someone who is i mean it's supposed to be acting it's supposed to mean that you're supposed to be able to act like something you're not i thought that's what acting was Mm. if we all can only play the roles that we are then how are we acting then we're all jennifer aniston because i feel like she's the same in every fucking movie so we're all just supposed to be like i'm like what is it the same script and they just put like a different thing she's always the same like Kind of like snarky, sassy, cute girl next door. Like, I've seen this script. I- yeah. I've seen this movie and I've heard this song. Yeah. So what now? We're all supposed to only do roles of, so I can never play X because I'm not, like, I can never play. So Meryl Streep has to, we have to cancel three quarters of her movies because she's played old people, young people, white people, Polish people. So she shouldn't have played any of those roles. Right. No. She's played an old man. I mean. It, also, isn't she British? So should we, should she not be allowed to play Americans? Thank you. Now there's push. You heard that there's this whole conversation about the black actors who are becoming more successful are British black actors over American black actors in American movies. Well, the Idris Elba's. Yeah. Well, some of them, it's literally because they have classical training and, you know, there's there's a handful of schools over, you know, across the pond that are just really, really good. Whereas like here we got USC, UCLA and we have Yale School of Drama. And Yale School of Drama is amazing, and and obviously there's there, there's Berkeley School of Music, but let, let's stick to let's keep it to, to to acting for now. Also, we have a, an ang- like all Americans. American culture is Anglophilic. You know what I mean? They're, they're Anglophilic in the sense that like they 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 t- and and we're Francophiles as well. We tend to just hold in higher esteem British culture and French culture here. You are thought to be. You, you can be the dumbest motherfucker in, in America, but if you speak French, we assume you're you're smart. If, if you have a British accent, even if you're faking it, you just fake it very, very well. People just assume you're smart and you know what you're talking about. I agree. It, it's part of, it, it's it's a carryover from that. It's mm-hmm. unfortunate. It is unfortunate. But it is a thing. And and also the fact that like American actors can't go over there and play British roles. You go, you can go over there in London's West End and play an American role. But they don't, they don't want you trying to do a British accent. Right. They're like, no, thanks. You suck. And we have plenty of people who can do that naturally here. Yeah. But like, you know, the tragedy of Macbeth just came out, right? Oh, I did see it with Denzel. Yeah. Denzel has classical 
training. And so they did it with him. He knows his shit when it comes to fucking Shakespeare. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh, it was great. I thought it was great too. Visually stunning. I love the starkness of it. Just it's no distraction at all. It's I'm going to, I actually want to watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It's, it's, we're going to sit here and we're going to act the shit out of this and you just sit down and, and watch. Just sit against this white wall. Yeah. There is no distraction. It's not about the outfits and the artwork and the gold and the, the thrones and that it is, it is so much contained in the dialogue and just the uh, physicality that comes with acting with limited exterior stimulation. And I, I, I think actually it's really quite brilliant. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, and it was very a refreshing good. change from like guns and explosions and special effects. I, I just found it so refreshing. I mean, I've just really kind of leaned back from American shows as a whole because all they do is shoot each other. From, like, I'm like, what is the story? Is there a story other than this guy's upset and is taking out vengeance and killed everybody in this movie? And apparently it's OK because he's 99 percent of the time a white guy. Like, oh, we love that in America. We love that. Right, we love Take that. In the John Take Wick in. movies. Yes. Yes. These aren't thugs and and murderers and savages these are guys defending their honor so that's Nat- i think american people we're just naturally violent so we gravitate to that and so we love stories that just allow the main character to go on a killing spree and not yes. feel bad about it right if he's white yeah oh yeah the only movie that a black guy gets to go on a killing spree it was a, it was it was also comical was Django. Ugh, and i hated that movie you know i hate that movie now you know my opinion on it I thought it was very well done. If you if you pay attention to the way Quentin Tarantino treated violence, the violence, the, the slavery violence, the camera is not there. You don't see it. You hear it to make it much more real and ethereal and just and, and hit you harder. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the spaghetti Western violence was over the top and blood spurts and everything. You know, he's literally, he's plucking the string of violence. Like, it's going to be this for one thing, and it's going to be this for something else. It's completely different. I hated that movie. (laughs) All right, I did not convince you. (laughs) I absolutely hate that movie. I think it makes fun of the seriousness of the situation. I think Tarantino has an obsession with the word nigger that I find a little strange. And I'm wondering when we're going to talk about possibly canceling him if we're going to cancel Joe Rogan. So... I don't really understand the parameters of in, of appropriate inappropriateness. Personally, I found Django distasteful. I thought, I mean, you don't see movies very often about the Holocaust that's funny other than Inglorious Bastards. And even still, they don't really dial the funny into watching the Jews in the camps or anything like that. So I, I still don't think it's even as distasteful as Django is. I, I found, I, I hated Django. But again, he's free to make his art and people are free to watch it. And if I don't like it, I'm just not going to watch it. And when somebody asks me my opinion on it, I will share it with them. Other than that, like, I, I don't give a shit. We, we should have a, a Tarantino breakdown, but I will say this. He, while he is mainstream, he's he's made such a niche for himself that he's also the type of person that cannot be canceled. Yeah, he can't be canceled, even though three quarters of his shit are Japanese ripoffs. But nonetheless, he he is brought an artistic take to it that makes it distinctly his own. And for that, I'll give him his props. Yes. But I, I don't like his obsession with with uh, the N word. That and feet. Have you ever noticed that he loves white? Yeah, he loves feet. feet. Yeah, he loves he loves feet. Yeah. You can only imagine what kind of fucked up shit he'd be doing. <laughs> Absolutely. 